Okay, guys, so welcome. This is Dog Waters. I want to welcome you to the first episode of Inside Baseball. For those of you who heard the last video, I said that Inside Baseball would kind of be a Q&A session that we would have weekly um, before the next video comes out or next set of videos come out. That gives you, the listeners, an opportunity to ask some questions. Not many of you guys have taken advantage of it. We got one or two or three people who, who actually have asked questions. So... I'm going to get to those questions. Then I'm going to go into a little bit of inside background on some of the stories. I picked uh, four stories to talk about some of the background information on them. And we'll just consistently do this um, as another way to interact with you guys. And also, I just for the record, if you look at the comment section, I'm constantly uh, replying to your comments because I really do enjoy interacting with people. Uh, if you are a troll who's trying to cause problems, you will notice that I am not going to respond to you. I'm simply going to block you. Uh, my experience in the radio business has told me that there are just some people with personalities that there is nothing that you can do. And so I don't waste time with that. So don't waste your time trolling me. Go find someone else because you're not going to get anywhere with that. So now to the questions. Uh, Stephanie G. Uh, Stephanie is a new subscriber. She came in, listened to the video, and asked a question. She said, what was your first paranormal experience? Is that what made you start doing what you're doing now? Um, the answer to that question is yes, it is what made me start doing what I'm doing now. Um, and my first paranormal experience happened when I was 12 years old. Um, my grandmother on my mother's side was a hoodoo practitioner. For those of you know who anything there's vo who know about this, there's voodoo, then there's hoodoo. Hoodoo being the darker side of it. And... Um, little did I know at the age of 12, I found this out at the age of 18, is that she had made a deal with a demon to take one of her grandchildren. We have a boatload of grandchildren in our family, especially males. It was a male grandchild that was supposed to be taken at 12 years old. So essentially, I'm 12 years old to set the scene. Um, our family owns a couple of acres of property. I would say maybe like 20 acres. And there are three houses on the property and one shed. There's a basketball goal. So if you imagine towards the front of the property, there's a house on the left. If you're facing it, there's a house on the left, a house on the right. They're separated by maybe like 40 yards. There's a shed towards the back. I would say from the house on the left, it's about 75 yards back. To the right of that is a basketball court. Not a concrete basketball court, but just it's a basketball goal and with a light and there's like just dirt. So we played basketball. You know, we just played so much on the grass that it turned into dirt, which turned into a nice hard court. And further back, there's another piece of property, another house. So I am 12 years old. I'm at the house on the left, which we could pretty much call the girl's house. because That's where all the females slept. And then the house on the right towards the front is the guy's house. I'm at the girl's house, which is where all the cooking was done, and um, everybody's kind of laughing and joking, and um, I remember it because we had greens for dinner, and I hated eating greens, and um, so I finished my breakfast, I finished my dinner early, because I really didn't want to eat, and so I was going to go ahead and go over to the other house to play. Back in those days, it was Nintendo. It was Double Dribble was the game on Nintendo, I'll never forget it. And I was so excited about going to play double dribble. I was like, okay, I'm not eating this crap. I'm going to go play double dribble, right? So I leave out the house. And it's about 9 o'clock at night. But, you know, it's no big deal. You're going from one house to the other. They're not that far apart. You can run from one side door to a back door. And so I'm going from one house to the other. And I start walking. And for some reason, something made me look towards the basketball goal area and there was a light back there but it wasn't a bright light it was a very very dim light and it shined light on half of the basketball court but off to the right of the court in the corner I saw something like a black figure you could see the light of it it's like a shadow figure is the best way to describe it um, and you could see it because it was darker it was blacker than the darkness that was out there so it was darker than the, the darkness and it caught my attention. And so I stood there and looked at it. Now, I keep in mind, I'm 12 years old. As a kid, I was a little pudgy kind of fat kid. I played football and played baseball. I was an athlete, 
but um, I wasn't the best athlete at that age. Later, I grew to be a phenomenal athlete, but um, I'm standing there, and I'm looking, and my eyes are trying to focus on whatever this is, and then the shit hits the fan. Literally 10 feet in the air, Cause and I know it's ten feet in the air because this figure is next to the basketball goal. It's off to the right of the basketball goal, outside of the little bit outside of the light of the goal. These two glowing red eyes appear, like almost like something opened his eyes and looked at me. And but it's ten feet. The eyes are ten feet, hands down, no doubt about it. It's at the same level as the basketball rim. And my childish mind, and I mean my, the mind of a child, is standing there, frozen, trying to figure out what the hell this is. I'm like, what the hell is this? What's going on? And then it starts to move towards me. But moving towards me is not the right definition of what was happening. It wasn't walking towards me. It was gliding towards me and moving not at a fast pace, but at a steady pace, almost like almost like it knew I wasn't going to move. It wasn't in a rush. It wasn't like it didn't like foom, fly over to get me. It's like it knew I wasn't going anywhere. I was frozen. And so I'm just standing there staring at these eyes and freaking out and i hear the door open to the house i just came out of and my cousin um at this time i'm 12 he's a senior in high school so he's what are you 17 18 when you're senior in high school he comes out the door and he says hey what you doing and i'm just standing there staring and then i hear his feet come down these wooden steps like boom 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 and you his feet hit the ground the grass and he's running and he tackles me literally tackles me like a a a football dummy boom he hits me and i remember the impact it was so powerful because he's a big guy and uh this is one of my favorite cousins to this day he hits me boom picks me up runs the distance from where i am to the other door up the steps into the house into the bedroom puts me in the bedroom closes the door and says don't leave out of this room and then i hear him run back out of the house and next thing you know i hear all my uncles come running from that other house i mean and this all is going on it's just boom 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 it's just all this motion going on it's like it was an explosion of of movement right and he comes in the room and he sits with me and he just sits there he says hey Go ahead and play your game. And he plays the game with me till about midnight. I start getting sleepy. And I kind of fall asleep a little bit, wake up. When I wake up, he's just sitting there playing the game. I go to sleep about 3 o'clock in the morning. I wake up, he's sitting up, sitting there. Um, and about 6 o'clock that morning, I woke up. Because I would wake up early to play the video games with my other cousins. When I woke up 6 o'clock that morning, not only was he there, but two of my other older cousins was there. And these were all male cousins. Um, one was 22 and one was 26. And they're all in the room. Two of them were sitting on the floor with their backs against the wall asleep. And he was sitting in a chair. So quite naturally, my 12-year-old mind wants to know what the hell is going on. Um, I asked him that time, that evening. Well, I asked him when he brought me in the house what the hell was that. But he wasn't telling me anything. And he literally talk me into playing the game and maybe i blocked it out of my mind i don't know what it was that allowed me to actually sit there and play double dribble with him it was probably more comforting than anything to where i just couldn't even as an adult it's still hard for me to think about it but maybe i don't know as a kid my brain just couldn't process it when i turned 18 years old and he basically told me that my grandmother had did a hoodoo ritual where she cut a deal with a demon and the deal was that Somebody who was a 12-year-old boy in our family had to be taken in order for it was the exchange. And I don't know what she did the exchange for, but um, someone who was 12 years old had to be taken. Yeah, that's the story of what happened to me. Yeah, and that's why, that's my experience, my first experience at 12 years old. So, Stephanie, you dug down to the truth. All right, next question. Um, Fly Catchful says, can Bigfoot or Dogman be captured? Bro, to be honest with you, I believe that Bigfoot and Dogman probably have already been captured. If they haven't been captured, um, our 
federal government does know about them. I just don't see them bringing that information to light because there's too many people out in the woods hunting. There's too much fishing and logging and camping. And the federal parks make too much money for people to understand and know that there are gigantic damn people, hairy people running through the woods, kidnapping people and eating them. And that there are werewolves running through the woods, probably eating and killing people. Like the whole the whole outdoors industry would fall apart or would have to shift to where now people will go out and hunt these things. It, it, it would be a, a strategic nightmare if that ever came out. So do I think someone's captured them? I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure they have. I'm pretty sure they captured them a long time ago. And do I am I do I think that our government knows about them? Hell yes, they know about them. Just like they know about all the rest of the crap that goes on. And they think we're too fragile and too sensitive to deal with anything. Uh next question. Jay Bird, my man. Jay Bird X. Uh, where's the question? That's a lot of writing, Jay Bird. Oh, Jay Bird asked me if I had done any collaborations. Uh, cool. Oh, no, no, Jay Bird didn't ask that. Jay Bird was asking about the pictures, videos, and all the other documentation that I've been receiving from people. Jay Bird, I have to have their permission to release these things. Um, and I've been working with some people to do that. For example, I have a story from 2008 where a guy got a picture of what looks to be a dog man. But he won't give me permission to release his picture because he doesn't want to be ridiculed and I, I can understand I have to respect his wishes um, his wishes and um, so the minute I start getting some permission to release stuff I will release him I don't have a problem holding on to it um, I hope the government doesn't come kidnap me if I do but uh, <laughs> but we'll see alright more inside baseball so the four stories we have here Five true horror stories, three disturbing back page stories. Let's start the one that's true horror story, and then Dog Man stalks two Louisiana fishermen. Let's start with the Dog Man story and give you guys some inside baseball. As you are aware, that story is about the father and the son who went fishing in the bayous. Their engine was not working. They're trolling along in a trolley with the trolling motor, which is a small motor in front of the boat. A big werewolf comes out of the bushes and pretty much stalks them along the riverbank. So... You guys have heard the story. What you don't know is what happened on the back end of the story. Some of you do if you listen to the Dogman Radio, uh, Dogman Encounters with Vic. Some of you know some of this. But So the father is traumatized by this. He turns to drinking um, and developed a very bad drinking problem because he just could not comprehend this. The son, the son has had to have psychiatric help. I mean, a lot of psychiatric help. Um, in the video, they talk about going back out and going fishing and hunting with guns and shotguns but the son cannot get on a boat again at this point in time he definitely can't go back out into the bayous because it's way too traumatic too traumatic the next time they went fishing after that in the story they talk about getting their boat fixed and getting a, a trolley motor that has a trolling motor that had a gas engine on it which would make them go faster well they went out and tried to fish again in the bayous and as soon as the sun went down the sun completely had a panic attack almost fell out the boat i mean it was insane what they told me happened to him so he he's like really shaken up behind this i mean to the point to where he has trouble you know taking trash out to the point to where he has trouble going out to the car at night he goes outside with a weapon to take the trash out and he goes outside with a weapon to take you know to go to his car at night that's how traumatized he is by this and you know based on my experience and what I've heard, I didn't see, but what I heard in a little bit that I did see, I can completely understand it. Because right now, as I talk to you, I'm sitting here with my front door open and my screen door locked. And I, I'm i not comfortable with that darkness right there. And I'm not comfortable because of a demon or a ghost or spirit. It's this damn dog, man. So I can understand how they feel. Next story I'm going to talk about is the three disturbing back pages stories. Inside of there, there's a very funny story. Well, all those stories were funny to me. I mean, they were absolutely hilarious. Um, just the, the the events that happened. But there's one story that is told by a, a guy who's a friend of mine. And he's one of those hard party and rock stars, entrepreneurs that we have here in New Orleans. And he actually owns um, a condo on Bourbon Street in the French Quarters. 
and he was the one that ended up calling the transsexual off back page and kind of quickly falling in love and ends up getting beat up pissed on and kicked <laughs> and kicked by the transsexual so what what's behind that story and what people don't know is he talks about them going to have get some food and all the rest of the stuff he actually took that guy because it's a guy i mean took that guy out to a couple of bars that were and particularly one bar that was like right across from his um across from his his condo and people knew this transsexual and knew this transsexual was prone to be violent and tried to tell him but he was so drunk and having fun that you know he was like oh no this is not gonna happen and his words to me was that he she was very passable and when i asked him what passable passable meant he said well he could pass for a woman but when i saw the pictures of this person passable was not what i saw i saw a man <laughs> so it, it was just it, it's funny i mean it's, it's inside baseball and some of the stuff is not scary um and some of the stuff is scary uh going back to one of my very first videos which is um it talks about the nurse at charity hospital that was being stalked and was on the elevator um she actually is a friend of mine's wife um and she told me that story during a party that we were having. And I was just telling her about what I was going to do. And she's like, well, I got a story for you. I'll tell you about this freaky thing that happened to me. And uh, prior to that, she was one of those people who just felt like, oh, you know, bad things happen to other people. Um, but after that, since that, she's taken martial arts. Um, she carries a taser, she carries pepper spray, and she carries this little thing on her keychain that has these two knuckle spikes. I mean, like, she's turned into a badass since then. You know, she really has turned into a badass since then. And she's all about self-defense. She's all about being aware of your surroundings. And just to the women who listen on this channel, you just need to be aware of where you're going and what you're doing. I mean, whether you're butt ugly or you're absolutely beautiful, I don't know why I said that, but you need to be aware of your surroundings. And to the guys, you know, you need to be aware of your surroundings, too. I mean, you don't want to be um, caught off guard by anything and end up in some of these situations. And it just seems like human nature, we're prone by human nature to just do dumb stuff sometimes and uh, to get more comfortable than we should be. You know, in the case of a dog, man, you know, you don't expect a werewolf to come out, but you know, in the case of leaving work in the middle of the night and just assuming it's all good, you know, those are things you just can't do. You need to be more careful and cautious. If you're going to be working overnight, park your car somewhere where you can get to it. Not in the middle of a parking garage, you know, where it's unsafe, where you're going to be the only person going in the garage. Uh, um, under five true horror stories. This is some very good inside baseball. So in that story, uh, in that collection of stories, there are these two girls in Covington, Louisiana, who end up becoming victims, or they, they weren't victims, they actually were very smart, um, where well, someone breaks into their home, and these guys are searching for them. The oldest daughter was so smart that she did so many little things that I couldn't put in the story, but I want to tell you about them. Like, little things like clicking off the lights in the upstairs of the house which she did which allowed them not to be seen from outside she did that she actually took the her ipad that she had or whatever little device she had i, I believe it was an ipad it could have been an android pad but it was one of those pads um and actually set it up on the the nightstand recording to record the guys coming into her room went out the window with the cell phone and called this little girl handled that situation in, a, in an amazing manner and um, her dad actually was so surprised that his daughter was able to handle that type of pressure um, that she was able to you know to perform under that kind of pressure I mean he was very 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 surprised he was very proud of his daughter now about the the guys who broke in 
both of those guys had some serious, serious criminal records. One of them had already been convicted of rape um, and molesting a minor. How the hell he got out of jail, I don't know. The other one um, had a bunch of assault and battery charges and armed robbery charges. Um, and these guys were like serious criminals. These weren't, these weren't like, oh, let's just go break in the house. These guys were going to hurt them. And luckily with her smart thinking, her quick thinking, she was able to really get away from that and save her little sister. And I'm just, you know, I'm very thankful that they got away from that situation. Um, so that was a little, in, that's a little inside baseball to tell you guys what's coming down the pipeline. I got a couple of, couple of stories that have been submitted by you, the listeners. I have uh, one story that's super freaky that I got from a clerk that works at the criminal court in New Orleans about a black eyed, uh, a guy with black eyes that was an attorney that was, that came to the court freaking insane story um and i actually know the judge who she works for so i i don't think this woman is lying at all um there was another story submitted i can't remember which one, but i'm probably gonna do five to eight stories on this next video um it won't be much dog man or bigfoot because the dog man stuff that i have now the new stuff that i have i'm really trying to do a little bit more investigating into it because some of this stuff, some of the, the dog man stuff that I have now, I'm really trying to do the more investigation into the actual people who are submitting these stories um, and the people who are telling me about it because these are not coming through the traditional avenues. Um, all my other stories have come from a friend of a friend. These are much further down the line. This is a friend of a friend of a friend of a friend. And I just feel like the further it gets away from people who I really know, the less credible it may be it may make to be good entertainment it may make good entertainment but i want to make sure that i don't um put stuff out that can be exploited in any way to and used against the community or whether it be the bigfoot community or whether it be the dogman community and can be used to exploit that community and say hey you know this is the type of crap going out you know do you believe this or somebody comes out and say hey i made that completely up I know that there are people out there who do those things and I just don't want to put anything out that will affect the community of people who are believers and followers and seekers of that knowledge because there are very few people who actually do take time to seek out hidden and forbidden knowledge and learn those things so I don't want to put out just anything uh, I want to be able to verify so these guys I want to sit down with I want to look them in their eyes I want to ask them questions I want to see the triggers I want to see if they squirm I want to see if they uh, if their eyebrows move, I want to see if they twitch, and it'll give me better insight into these stories. So I'll probably be able to get a chance to do that Sunday. No, I won't get a chance to do it Sunday. It would have to be Saturday morning, um, which means that some more Dog Man probably will be coming out by next Thursday. Well, that's it for the inside baseball. I will be putting out another video next week, uh, inside baseball video next week. That is in reference to the videos that will be coming out over the weekend. And hopefully next time we'll get more questions submitted. Also, guys, remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. I dare you to go and look and see. I pretty much respond to all comments in some way, shape, or form. So this is dark water signing out and i'll see you guys next time you take a swim in the dark waters